Hi, everybody. My name is Dr. Sinead Keneally. I am a lecturer and academic coordinator in the School of Psychology here at NUI Galway. And I'm absolutely delighted to welcome you to our virtual open day. I, even though this is a virtual open day, I think you'll get great benefit from attending these online talks and also from engaging in the live Q&A sessions that will be happening throughout the day. So I'd strongly encourage you to engage with those and myself and my psychology colleagues will be on hand to answer all the burning questions you might have about psychology. This talk today will focus on giving you a bit of background about what psychology is and maybe what it isn't. And also very importantly about your undergraduate options in psychology at NUIG. So first things first, we'll give you a bit of a definition of psychology. So psychology in a nutshell is the science of human behavior. And to explore human behavior, we use scientific methods. The term psychology gives us a very definite indication of what psychology is focused on. So that ology bit at the end, you see that in scientific disciplines quite a bit. So you see biology, archaeology, geology, lots and lots of scientific ologies out there. So typically it does mean science. There are some ologies out there that masquerade as science. For example, astrology, Scientology, not very scientific at all, but try to pretend that they're scientific. But Theology and psychology very much indicates that it's a science. The psych bit comes from the Greek word psyche, which means mind. So if you put the two together, you get the science of the mind. And that essentially is what psychology is. There are lots of different sub areas within psychology. Psychology is a very broad term. Lots of little sub areas, sub disciplines within psychology. And this list is definitely not exhaustive. It's some very key areas and certainly areas you'll be studying if you take an undergraduate course in psychology. But there are other areas, too, that aren't included here. Clinical psychology is involved with the diagnosis and treatment of mental health issues and disorders. Clinical psychologists can work with children, with adolescents, adults, older adults, people with intellectual disabilities in a variety of different settings. Biopsychology, neuropsychology is involved with looking at how the brain and the nervous system impact on behavior. So we might look at the effect of drugs, for example, on the brain and how that impacts behavior, how damage to different parts of the brain affects behavior. Uh, it's a very, very interesting and very current um, area of psychology. Educational psychology is concerned with uh, looking at typically school age children and identifying things like dyslexia, dyspraxia, sometimes autism, and also putting in place proper educational supports um, for children with, with these issues so that they might reach their full potential in school settings. Cognitive psychology looks at memory, sensation and perception. So how we make memories, how we store memories, how we sense and perceive the world around us. Forensic psychology is always very popular, but maybe not as dramatic as people see in movies or on TV shows. And that's concerned with looking at, say, prison populations, um, very much working in prison settings, uh, with, a, with a very specific population. Social psychology is the study of groups and how people behave in group settings. And typically social psychology shows us that because we're a little bit more anonymous in a group setting versus when we're alone, that we tend to behave a little, little bit worse when we're in groups versus when we're running solo. Industrial psychology is also known as uh, organizational psychology, and that's about psychology in the workplace. So looking at human resources, well-being in the workplace, motivating employees, etc. 
health psychology. That's a personal interest of mine. It's a very, very broad field. So I'm personally interested in looking at stress and how people become stressed and how that impacts on their physical health and their mental health. Um, other health psychologists might look at certain chronic illnesses like diabetes and how people manage that and how they cope with that. Uh, there may also be behavioral interventions to try and change people's health behaviors. So we might, for example, try to get people to stop smoking or we might get them to increase their intake of vegetables or water. So again, very broad. Experimental psychology is a very fundamental area of psychology. And that's all about, you know, if you study experimental psychology, you learn how to conduct experiments, which are rigorous and controlled, uh, to look at certain questions, to answer specific questions in psychology. We carry out experiments, scientific experiments, and we learn how to do that. There's a whole you know, set of methodologies around that. It's very important. Developmental psychology looks at um, our social, our emotional and our cognitive development across the lifespan. So beginning from pre-birth right up until death. Okay. So just a very brief example. I don't really have time to show you videos but I would really encourage you to go onto YouTube and check out Swiss psychologist Jean Piaget for lovely examples of how experimental, developmental and cognitive psychology combine. So many areas of psychology intersect and combine. Um, Jean Piaget was one of the first people to do experiments with children, to assess children and to try and figure out how they perceive the world. And the little experiments he set up are very simple, but very, very clever. And they have told us a lot about how children at certain stages, certain ages, you know, how their perception of the world changes and what, you know, whether they can grasp certain concepts at certain stages. So big things like volume, mass, um, you know, being able to see from another person's perspective. These are big milestones, being able to grasp these ideas. And Piaget studied that. So definitely YouTube, Jean Piaget, and lovely experiments like the Three Mountain Experiment, um, the Beaker Experiment, where he looked at volume and experimenters putting water into different sized beakers, um, working with Play-Doh, so on numbers and things, but it's they're really beautiful experiments and a great introduction to developmental psychology and experimental psychology and also looking at our perceptions about the world. So psychologists are really concerned with like a very wide variety of subject matter from small micro behaviors to really big global concepts and and issues of global concern, big, big issues, right down from tooth flossing to terrorism. That's the other example that I'm going to give you, but I'm going to start with tooth flossing. So something like tooth flossing, and it's just something I picked. There are lots of different little small behaviors that psychologists look at, but this is, a, this is an everyday behavior that sometimes we don't do very well, even though we know that it's good for our oral health, and we know that our oral health is connected to our overall health. So our gums and our teeth, if we have bad oral health, that can affect our cardiac system. Our gums are closely linked to our bloodstream. So if we have any infections, that can really, uh, really have a significant impact on our overall health and well-being. So trying to get good habits instilled that may seem small, but are really significant in the long term is really important. So you have this lovely uh, piece that was published in the British Journal of Health Psychology, looking at how habit, how flossing habits are formed. So all the things psychologists know about how we can get people to form a flossing habit. Very important. Tooth flossing to terrorism. So terrorism is a global phenomenon. It's a very problematic and ongoing problem in the world. And some of our own psychologists here in NUIG um, look at terrorism and terrorist behaviors and try and understand why people 
become indoctrinated, why people join terrorist groups in the first place. And the key idea really is to prevent people from becoming radicalized, to even prevent things before they, they get out of hand. Uh, this is Dr. John Horgan. So John started his career in University College Cork, and now he runs one of the world's biggest uh, terrorism research centers in the US. And he has an excellent book on the psychology of terrorism, if you're interested. But this is, again, a global issue. So going, you know, moving from small little behaviors to behaviors of really global concern, you know, that we're talking about all the time. Psychologists are also very interested in looking at current issues. So if you look at things like Brexit, Brexit has been the subject of a lot of psychological research. Psychologists trying to understand what it is that makes people vote in a certain direction, vote yes, vote no. Is there cultural aspects behind that? Is there an identity behind that? What, what's it all about? Also things like vaccination, this goes back to health psychology. So health psychologists have been looking at, you know, what influences people to get vaccines long before COVID-19. Health psychologists have been trying to improve uptake on flu vaccines. They've been trying to encourage uh, parents to vaccinate their children because now we have more measles outbreaks because people aren't. They're incorrectly connecting vaccines with things like autism, which has been totally disproven. So it's trying to understand the mindset, the psychology behind you know, these decisions that people make and trying to help them make good health decisions for themselves and their families. So that's a, a very whirlwind tour of psychology, but hopefully it gives you an idea that psychology is a bit broader uh, than again, just delivering therapy, that we look at all kinds of behaviors and we try and intervene in lots of different ways. So psychology at NUI Galway, what are the different routes that are available to you? So this is relevant to everybody, whether you're planning to do a general arts degree or whether you're coming in to do a BA psych denominated, as we call it, degree. So these are your options and I'll run through them one by one. So first off, the most straightforward entry into psychology is to do the denominated or the pure psychology, as we call it, BA in psychology, and this is called a direct entry route. So people will put psychology BA down in their CAO form as a preference, and that's, that's their direct entry in. They'll be taking nothing else but psychology. That's the, the program, the only program they've signed up for. And typically, this course is around 530 points. Now that varies year on year according to demand. Psychology is typically always a high demand course. And of course, points are driven by that demand. So that's what you're aiming for, kind of around 530 or more, because even if you do get the required number of points, there may be more people than places available. So that's kind of what you're aiming for, a little bit above that. We take 15 students in annually. Maybe that might, might vary a tiny little bit year on year, but 15 is typically what we take in in this BA denominated psychology course. Um, so that's direct entry to the CAO. These students in year one of their course will take psychology along with two other art subjects of their choosing to get a little bit of variety and a little bit of a taste of other subjects. And the, the subjects they might take might be, they can be anything really that's available to them within the arts subject choice. But very often students will choose subjects that kind of relate a little bit to psychology, like sociology and politics or philosophy. But really, it can be anything that, that they want, that they might enjoy. And then from year two onwards, these students will be only doing psychology. They'll be doing their pure BA in psychology with their smaller cohort of fellow students and nothing else to degree level. Okay, 
So that's the denominated BA degree in psychology. And the CAO code for that is GY104. So the second mode of entry is GY101. So this is general arts. This is another route into psychology. <clears throat> this program is slightly lower on the points requirements. It's been pretty steady for the past number of years at about 300 points. But again, that, that might change, you know, be prepared for a few points up, a few points down either way. It's very hard to, to predict year on year. Um, we have about four to 500 students in first year arts taking psychology, and that includes our BA denominated students in that mix as well. So it's a pretty big cohort. Anybody, there's no, there's no restriction on anyone taking first art psychology. Okay, it's, it's a big class. Anyone can take it. You know, it's one of the art subject choices. The distinction comes from second year onwards. So if you take GY101 arts and you take psychology in first year, you will also take two other art subjects, okay, of your choosing. French, history, whatever, whatever you enjoy. But from second year onwards, if you want to go on with psychology, you have to get into the top 15 in your class if you want to pursue denominated pure psychology. So we have 15 places up for grabs, the top 15 people, and that's their performance in psychology overall. It's based entirely on their psychology mark, where they come in their class. And those top 15 students will be offered a place to go with the denominated degree students into the pure denominated degree from second year onwards. OK, we also have 100 places available for students to go into a joint BA with psychological studies route. OK. So psychological studies is about half the content of the pure psych BA. It's, it's a little bit different. Well, it's quite different in that it's about half the content, but it's still a pretty substantial course. And you take that as a joint subject, psychological studies, with another art subject, one of your other two art subjects that you took in first year that you want to take on into second year. So, you, you know, you might have chosen history. So you go on from second year then. And if you've been offered a place in psychological studies and you, you do a joint BA in psychological studies and history to degree level. OK, so there are restrictions, even if you go in through general arts going forward with psychology. But, you know, people are often concerned about the level of competition. You know, psychology in second year isn't everybody's cup of tea not everybody who takes it in first year wants to go forward with it into second year so that kind of cuts down the competition a little bit and we always find that people who are very focused and you know very keen on you know you don't have to work weekends and late nights and everything just to keep on top of your work and you'll know, be dedicated and you know, if you're very into psychology as a subject and you you give good attention to it and you you listen to what we're saying you have a very good chance of getting in to a second year psychology program if you come in through arts gy 101 and i got into psychology through that route i didn't get 500 or 530 points in my leaving cert i came into college to do journalism and uh, i got waylaid i took psychology English, Sock and Paul and philosophy. We had to do four subjects in first year at that time. And I happened to get into the top 15. I was offered a place in the pure degree, the denominated degree. And I took it and I became a psychologist. So you never know where your life will lead you or your choices will lead you. Um, so I definitely didn't come in through the, the high point CAO, but here's where I landed. Um, so that's the BA program GUI 101 route. We also have two higher diploma programs in psychology. We have a one year higher diploma program that's available to students who've completed the joint BA in psychological studies and another art subject. 
And this one year higher diploma basically gives these students everything that they missed out on that they would have done in the pure denominated psych program. Remember, if you're doing psych studies, you only do half of that. So this is a top up, gives you everything you missed out on and essentially the equivalent of a pure denominated psychology degree. And that is recognized and accredited by the Psychological Society of Ireland, which is our accrediting body. Um, they recognize it, it's recognized globally pretty much because you meet all those requirements. And you know the, the key thing that you do miss out on if you do psychological studies is uh, the experience of doing a research project. And that's something you'd certainly do in the one year higher diploma. Now it is competitive. We typically have eight to 12 students per year in this higher diploma. Um, and it's based on your, your psychology mark. And we look at your overall BA degree at the end of, at the end of your degree. So if you, if you have that joint honours degree and you still have a burning desire to have the equivalent of a psychology degree, say you want a career specifically in psychology, then you pursue the one-year higher diploma. We also have a two-year higher diploma that's available to people with any degree background. The only requirement is that they already have a degree. So it could be a degree in nursing, philosophy, engineering, anything. Uh, we often have people coming into this program who are looking for a second career and to start up another career in psychology. So they may have worked, for example, in industry or healthcare or various accounting, various backgrounds, and they want to start again and do psychology. And this is a two year program. It's quite intensive and the numbers are limited as well because we have to maintain a certain staff student ratio. and. Uh, I suppose that's that's our sort of undergraduate offerings, which are it's, it's quite quite a substantial offering we have and quite a few different routes. But I hope that's kind of simplified things and made things a little bit clearer to you. So I can see already that I've made an error in the title here because we are moving to a BSc. That's something that I'm very keen to mention. We are currently a BA in psychology and we're within the College of Arts. Now, there's no particular reason that psychology is in the College of Arts versus the Faculty of Science. In different universities, sometimes psychology is within science, sometimes it's within arts. It's just a tradition of the university. It doesn't make a course any less scientific or more scientific. But we did really want to get the message out there and reflect the fact that we are a science. So from the new year, the new academic year onwards, from September onwards, we will be a four year BSc Bachelor of Science in Psychology degree. We'll be staying within the College of Arts. Our course content will not change all that much. We have all the same core content, but we will be extending our course out by one year and we'll be, you will get a Bachelor of Science in Psychology versus a BA. Okay, so this is a breakdown of all the content year on year. So you'll see there in year one and two, there are some very fundamental areas of psychology, all what we call the core areas of psychology, like social, developmental, cognitive, you see there, personality. And you build on these and it gets a little bit more detailed going into year two. Then in year three, you will see that you have elective options. So you'll be going into more specialist areas of psychology and you'll have more choice. And you'll also be doing a research placement. Um, you know, things like community service, service learning. So very practical aspects of psychology. In year four, the key defining feature of year four is the research project. So you will be asked to develop and execute uh, and write up a research project of your own and you'll be supervised by a member of academic staff and that is really rewarding and fantastic and it's kind of the culmination of all your learning and skills um, you know and to show that you're a researcher and that you have all these different um, skills have come together and uh, you can produce your own independent piece of research. So these are the 
attributes that we typically see in our psychology graduates and what you can expect to get from studying psychology at NUI Galway. And these are the things that employers are keen to look at and the kind of kinds of words you'll be putting in your CV if you take a degree in psychology or you study psychological studies. So our students, we very much teach things like critical thinking. We are keen that our students are very good um, communicators. They're very good written in written and oral communication, that they have very good um, research skills, that they are very scientifically literate and obviously, you know, specialist, uh, they, that they are experts in, you know, specific areas of psychology and in the fundamentals of psychology. And very crucially there down below, you see ethically and socially aware. And also to have a good ability to collaborate with people. I know teamwork is a great buzzword, but that's very, very important if, you know, whether you want to go on for a career in psychology or you want to take your psychology degree or your joint honours psych studies degree and move on with something else. These are all very, very core skills and values that you will take from your study with us. So this is our beautiful school, the actual building. This is about, I think about seven or eight years old. And even though psychology has been on the NUIG campus since the 1970s, we've been a little bit all over the place because we have, we need teaching rooms, but as a science, we also need laboratory space. We need space to, to bring people, to test people, to carry out experiments, to carry out our research. So this school is specifically designed for that purpose, to provide teaching space, but also research space. And it's right in the heart of campus. It's beside the Arts Millennium Building, which you get to know very well. And very importantly, right across from the Beelin, which is the main restaurant on campus, and also the library. So we're right in the heart of everything. <clears throat> Every school of psychology or department of psychology has different core areas of focus and specialism. And NUI Galway School of Psychology has two key areas of interest. That's health and well-being and brain and behavior. Okay. So within those two themes, we have quite a number of research groups. We have more research groups than the ones I've highlighted here, but we don't really have time to go through all of them. Um, we have the Rex research group, which is looking at risky and extreme behavior, and that might include terrorism. So many of our PhD students within that group have traveled abroad to the Middle East um, to, to look at, you know, and, and spoken to members of the IRA and, various different groups to try and understand, um, you know, terrorism behavior, why people join groups, uh, you know, their beliefs, so on, trying to, trying to get a, a greater knowledge of that. This group also looks at, as I said, risky and extreme behaviors. So things like risky driving behaviors. So we have a fantastic driving simulator um, and a lot of work is sponsored by the Road Safety Authority. They're keen on trying to figure out why people engage in extreme and risky driving. What, what is it that makes people do these things? And this, of course, increases, hugely increases the risk of accident. So we can't really do that kind of research live on the road. So we have to use a simulated environment to look at that, a controlled environment. We have the Center for Pain Research and there is a, a pain clinic in the hospital UHG. We're very, as a school, we're very, very aligned to the hospital nearby, University College Hospital, and also a lot of local organizations like the West of Ireland Cardiology Foundation, Cree, Cancer Care West, all these health-related community services. Uh, the Centre for Pain Research is very much aligned with the pain clinic in UHG and looks at pain in a variety of different domains and populations. So often looks at pain in young children, chronic pain, people who have chronic health conditions and long-term pain, 
and what influences that and how we can treat that. And even things like phantom limb pain. So when people lose a limb, there is something called phantom limb pain where they might often feel pain in the area where their limb used to be, even though it's not there anymore, they feel that it's excruciating, that their limb is still there. It's excruciatingly painful. And there are treatments that we can do to help people who have that kind of pain. So it's really fascinating research. We also have the health behavior change research group. So I spoke a little bit before about how we try and change people's health behaviors. So we could be um, looking at population of people with diabetes and of course trying to manage blood glucose is a hugely important for people with diabetes so trying to you know maintain that kind of behavior good behaviors around medication and taking medication and it's vast it's really vast the, the different um the different clinical populations that we look at within health behavior change we have NICOG which is uh, neuroimaging, um, cognition and genomics. So people in this research group, it's aligned with lots of different groups across the college, including anatomy, neuroanatomy, psychiatry. And um, this group is involved with looking at the brain, the nervous system and neuroimaging. So MRI and EEG, trying to, to look at brain function and also genetics. So some of our group look, for example, at the genetic basis of schizophrenia. We have the only center for research in autism and neurodevelopmental disorders, ICAM, which was opened by the president of Ireland a, a few years ago. And uh, as I said, many other research groups, but this is just a little snippet. It's a very, very diverse uh, group of um, psychologists and areas and all really, really interesting and applied within the school. This is just a very quick look at some of the lovely facilities we have um, when you go inside the building. So we have a fully functioning biochemistry lab, bioassay lab. I set this up when I was doing my PhD many moons ago. And basically we take people's spit samples. Psychologists are very afraid of needles and blood. So <laughs> we don't touch blood. But if we get a spit sample from you, we can see how stressed you are by looking at a hormone called cortisol. We can look at your immune function, lots of different things from your saliva sample. Obviously, with your consent, we do it all very ethically. That's a little bit more of the bioassay lab. We also have a dedicated EEG lab. That's electroencephalogram, looking at people's brain waves. So we might look at their brain waves after showing them or while showing them different stimuli in a computer screen, how they respond. Uh, we have a very, very sophisticated cardiovascular lab with lots of different, um, different types of equipment looking at different cardiovascular parameters. So I mentioned before that I look at stress and we are very interested in how psychological stress can impact the body. Um, we can look at stress hormones through spit, but we can also look at the cardio cardiovascular function of people and how it alters when they're stressed out. Other labs that we have, other bits of equipment that we have that I really hope that you'll see in time if you come and study with us and maybe you'll use them for your research projects or your postgraduate research in the future. We have an eye tracking device. We have a driving simulator. We have galvanic skin response equipment. So when we're stressed out, we sweat. We have sweaty hands when you're stressed and galvanic skin response looks at that, measures skin conductance. We have cold, a cold presser water bath, which induces pain. So we keep the temperature of that at four degrees. And if you immerse your hand in that, it does induce a certain type of pain. It's very safe, but it's a great way of looking experimentally at pain, an ice bath, cold bath. Um, and we also have uh, EMG, electromyography, which is looking at um, muscles. You can look at facial muscles or muscles, muscles in the hand and their reaction when we present people with certain stimuli. So another big question we're asked, I study psychology or I take a, a joint degree in psych studies. 
what kind of settings can I work in? What kind of career can I get from this? The answer is there are many, many options. Because psychology is so related to so many different areas, and this is not a sort of a cop-out answer, this is a very genuine answer. And this is looking at where all of our current graduates are working at. You know, clinical psychology or psychotherapy is the one most people think about. Okay, so working with people, working in the area of mental health, um, you know, intervening, uh, working in hospital clinics, primary care settings, prisons. So that's kind of uh, if you want to specialize in in that area and become a clinical uh, psychologist or psychotherapist, that's the sort of work you'd be doing. Academia, which is I am an academic, so I conduct research. I'm interested in the area of health psychology, specifically stress, and also teaching, which is something I absolutely love. So that's what academic psychologists do on a day-to-day -day basis. A lot of psychologists are very drawn to journalism. Um, a really key example of someone who is very prominent in, in journalism in broadcast media in Ireland is Ray Darcy. He has a BA in psychology from UCD, I think. And uh, there are lots of other examples, particularly in the US, of people with psychology backgrounds who've gone into um, media journalism because of the excellent communication skills and analytic skills that they come from their degrees with. Um, a lot of our graduates work in human resources, uh, in school settings as educational psychologists or as um, in, in various different capacities in schools. A lot of our graduates go straight from their undergraduate degrees and start working immediately with companies like Amazon, Google and Apple. That's very common. Um, a very good friend of mine who did a joint degree in psych studies in English is now a senior manager at Amazon. Now he carved his own sort of path, but that was his initial background. So there is a, there is a little bit of an element if you want to branch away from psychology of what it is, what you make of it and the opportunities that you see. But it really is a very desirable background for people to have because of all the skills that you get from a psych degree. Um, some of our graduates work in app development because there's a lot of psychology behind that. And our graduates also have very strong technical skills uh, and also research and development, data analytics, for example, outside of academia and private companies. So you can move very much away from focusing specifically on being a psychologist and your skills are very very wide reaching and very applicable and very desirable to employers <sighs> i have to put this slide in i know we have very little time really we try to squeeze so much in but uh, just busting some myths about psychology so i told you a little bit about what psychology is and this is the other part of the sandwich what psychology isn't and what we can't do. So psychologists can't read minds, unfortunately. We don't have that power, we're not psychic. Um, not all psychologists are therapists. So I'm a psychologist for many years now. I am not a therapist, I'm not a counselor. I can't, I'm not licensed or qualified uh, to give therapy to people. Even though I have a BA in psychology and a PhD, I'm not a therapist. I've qualified in another specialism of psychology. And after your degree, your BA degree or your joint honours degree, you won't be qualified to be a therapist either. You'll have to specialise uh, in, you'll have to do a postgraduate course or specialist training in psychotherapy or clinical psychology to get those skills. Uh, so we're not always therapists. That's an important but not not, not the only part of psychology. You can be a shy, introverted person and be a psychologist. A lot of shy, introverted students think, oh, psychology is for people who are out there and they're brilliant at communicating with people and aren't awkward. That's not true at all. If you're interested in human behavior, there is a place for you in psychology. So many different roles and jobs. Um, within psychology. So all personality types 
all kinds of people work within psychology. Another really important one, you can have mental health problems and be a psychologist. We're human beings. You can be a therapist and suffer from anxiety and depression. Many psychologists get therapy themselves. They take medication. We're human beings. So that does not exclude you. We're, we're absolutely not perfect. That does not exclude you from studying psychology or having a career in psychology. Finally, psych is a science. OK, so look, if you've done science in school, if you've studied biology, for example, it's great. It's a fantastic, you know, foundation for you, but it's not it's not essential to studying psychology in college. It's not a requirement. We will teach you everything from the ground up anyway. But, um, you know. OK, so normally at this point in the presentation, I would be saying hands up any questions. Um, unfortunately, because we <laughs> we are doing this virtually um, and this is pre-recorded, there will be no questions at this particular point. But please, please, please do come along to our live Q&A. I will be there and my wonderful psych colleagues will be there and we will do our very best to answer any, every and any question you have about psychology. So I really enjoyed that actually, even though I'm just talking to myself at this particular point, um, but I really hope to meet more of you. And I'm so, so looking forward to meeting many of you in person very, very soon. I hope that was useful. I hope you enjoyed it. And I just want to ask you to take care of yourselves um, look after yourselves and each other, and I will see you soon. Bye-bye.